The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO, we are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Theta Blanche Ayubia, your mathematics teacher. And we will begin by doing a correction of the assignment of the previous lesson. Complete these number sequences by filling the blank spaces. We have A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let us move straight forward to the solution. Now you look at the first thing you have to do is bring out the rule. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Now what is happening here? You see that we're multiplying the previous term by two to get the next term. And so if we should do that, it means we are going to multiply 32 by two to give 64 and multiply 64 by 2 to get 128. Looking at the next sequence, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You see that this sequence simply just follows the rule of even numbers. If you say even numbers, you are still correct. And if you say even numbers, it means what you have to do there is just adding two. Hmm? You add two because two plus two gives four. Four plus two gives six. So you will have 12 plus two to give 14. 14 plus two gives 16. The next sequence, one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13. You discover here that some this an addition again or you can say the set of uh odd numbers because the set of odd numbers if you say the odd numbers you are not wrong if you say the rule is adding two to the previous term to get the next term you are still correct so we have the next term will be 13 we have 15 and i add 2 to 13 to give 15 or you say the next odd number will be uh, 15 and the next will be 17. So we look at the next sequence 24, 21, 18, 15, 12, 19. You discover that from the from the previous term to the next term, something is being reduced because the numbers are reducing from one term to the other. And we said in our previous lesson that when it is reducing, it is either we have division or we have subtraction but from all indications there's no way you can divide 24 by something to give you 21 so the only obvious thing here is subtraction and to move from 24 to 21 we simply subtract 3 so we are subtracting 3 from each term to get the next term and if that is the case 9 minus 3 will give us 6 and 6 minus 3 gives 3 so we move on to the next sequence. We have 5,000, 1,240. You still discover here that there is a reduction from the first term to the next to the next. And we said when it's reduction, we, talk, we think of subtraction or division. But here, if you talk about subtraction, it will sound funny because to move from 5,000 
to 1,000 under subtraction, you will have to subtract 4,000 from 5,000 to get 1,000. And if you continue in that same pattern that you subtract 1,000 minus 4,000, it can never give you 200. So that should not be the pattern. So the pattern here should obviously be division. But now, what are we dividing? 5,000 divided by what number to give us 1,000? You see that 5,000 divided by 5 will give us 1,000. 1,000 divided by 5 gives 200. And so we continue that pattern. 200 divided by 5 gives 40. And 40 now divided by 5 gives 8. And 8 divided by 5. You know that 8 cannot divide, cannot divide 5 and gives you a whole number. So you can leave your answer as a fraction. 8 divided by 5. So that will be the next term of that sequence. The next sequence, we have 63, 54, 45, 36, 27. There's still a reduction. And the reduction here should obviously be subtraction because there's no number you will divide 63 by that number to give you 54. And so if you carry out your subtraction very well, you will discover that we are subtracting seven. It should be 63 take away nine, nine. 3 to take away 9 to give you 54. 54 take away 9 to give you 45. 45 take away 9 to give 36. 36 take away 9 to give 27. And so 27 take away 9 will give 18. And 18 take away 9 gives 9. So that was what you're supposed to have as your answers for the assignment. <laughs> So we continue with the lessons under the module numbers and operations in the set of numbers. Actually, we are looking at number patterns and the other subtopics under the module. We have the set Z of integers, fractions and decimals, arithmetic processes, real numbers and distances. Okay, so we are still under number patterns and elementary sequences. But now under elementary sequences, as a topic of today, specifically we are looking at finite and infinite sequences. So as the plan for the subject, for sorry, for the lesson of today, we will begin by looking at the objective, prerequisite, real life situation, learning activity, recall, application exercise, and we end the lesson with an assignment. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify a finite and an infinite sequence. When they give you a sequence, you should be able to say whether the sequence is finite or infinite. Now, what are you expected to know in order to follow this lesson? You can identify a sequence and the pattern of the sequence, meaning that if they give you a sequence, you already know how to come out with the rule for that sequence, or identify the pattern or the rule of that sequence, and then generate other numbers of the sequence. You already know that we did that in the previous lesson. Now let's look at the real life situation. I will read the question. You follow attentively, attempt. Then at the end of the lesson, we are going to look at it together. Mr. John has seven children. The ages of his children form a sequence of numbers given by three, five, seven, nine, eleven. What is the age of his eldest child? Okay, how will this help Mr. John? Mr. John is a uh, a father in a village, maybe there is a census going going on, and they, he has been they have been asked they have been, an agent has asked him to give the ages of his children. And Mr. John, he knows just the age of his last child, and he says the age of his last child is three three years, and he knows that the children the spaces between his children are he gave two years two years, and so the agent had to determine. 
the ages of his other children. So this agent successfully came out with the other ages and he came out with a sequence, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. But we were told that Mr. John has seven children. So what is the age of his eldest child? So as the lesson is going on, you will follow attentively and you will eventually you will know what to do. So we look, move on to the learning activity. Activity one, which of the following set of numbers has an end? Meaning that it stops, it doesn't continue. We have the first one, the first set or the first sequence. The next sequence, we have another sequence and the last sequence. Now let's move on to the solution. The first sequence, you see we should identify which of the sequences ends. ends. Now looking at the first, this first one, two, it starts from two, continues, and we said in a sequence, each term is separated by a comma. And when you look at it very well, 12 year, there is a comma behind 12, and there are three dots after 12. In our previous lesson, we mentioned that the three dots behind the term that we have indicates that that sequence continues. And so having these three dots here, it simply means that this sequence has no end. It doesn't end because of the three dots behind. Now we move on to the next. We said when we have three dots after a term, it means that sequence continues. Now look at about, look at uh, the, the next sequence. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Do we have dots in this sequence? Yes, we have dots in this sequence. But does the, do these dots indicate that this sequence end? No, because we have a number here at the end, 21. There is no comma behind 21, and there are no three dots after 21. It means that this sequence actually has an end. It stops at the term 20, 21, or at the number 21, which therefore means that sequence has an N because there are no three dots after. Remember, the three dots should be after a number, not before a number. If it is before a number, it means it doesn't take its place to say that that sequence continues. Now look at the next sequence. You see that this sequence the last, the last term that we're having here is 13. There's a comma behind 13, and there are three dots after that 13, meaning that that sequence has no end. The next sequence, you discover that the dots are before 64. And if since the dots are before 64, not after 64, it means this particular sequence has an end and it ends at the number 64. Now recall, a sequence that has a first term and a last term, and all the terms follow a specified order, is called a finite sequence. Let's look at this picture. If you look at it very well, this is a sequence. It starts from the first term, and it ends at the last term here. The last term here is the fourth term, which is nine. It starts from three and ends at nine. This sequence is finite. And we call this sequence a finite sequence because it follows a particular order. Now, if I write this, one, two, five, Nine, three, oh, sorry, uh, 11, 10. This sequence, it ends at, or this set of numbers ends at 10. 
Is there a particular order that it follows? There is no order. So you can't talk of a finite sequence. You can't talk of a sequence because the sequence is well defined. There is a rule that you have to follow to bring out each term. So this can not be a sequence. So there must be a rule it follows. So a sequence that has a first term and no last term is called an infinite sequence. E.g., we have two. It starts from two. And the last term we have here is two, is 12. But after 12, you can see some three dots after 12. And those three dots simply indicate that that sequence does not end at 12. It continues after 12. It means that you follow the rule that has been followed to bring to the rate the other terms to get the other terms that are being represented by the dots. And so, using this picture, you see now that the dots has been introduced. The dots have been introduced to indicate that this sequence actually continues. And this sequence, we can call this one now an infinite sequence because it has a pattern. And what is the pattern? It starts from three. You add two to get five, add two to get seven, add two to get nine, and add two to get the next number. And so, look at it. This the arrow on that line. This arrow simply indicates that the sequence continues. It's just like the dots. The sequence con continues. So, infinite sequence is when the, se the sequence continues. Infinite, forever and ever. Okay. We look at the application exercises. Which of the following sequences are finite or infinite? We have the first one, A. We look at the next one, B, C, D, and E. Take note. Finite means it ends at a particular number and there are no dots after that number. Meaning that what? The dots should be after a number for that sequence to be infinite. If the dots are before the number, it doesn't make the sequence to be infinite. It should be finite. So looking at the first sequence, you see that it is finite. Why? Because it starts at 1 and ends at 21. Even though we have three dots, three dots are before the 21, not after 21. So if these three dots were after 21, then we will say that this sequence is infinite. But since it is before 21, it is finite. It ends at 21. And these three dots in between 13 and 21 just simply tells you that there are some numbers between 30, 13 and 21 that has been left out that you can bring in following the order or the rule given by the numbers in the set, in the sequence. So you should understand that these three dots in between 13 and 21 simply represents those numbers that can be fitted in here following the rule of the sequence. Looking at the next sequence, we have 75, 70, you see it is decreasing. But now, when you reach at the term where we have 55, you see that after 55, we have three dots. And those three dots shows that that sequence is infinite. The next one is just similar. C is similar to what we have in A. Therefore, we conclude here that C is finite. But I want you to take note that all these sequences, they are all sequences because there is a rule they follow to generate each member of the sequence or each term of the sequence. The next one we have, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1. It doesn't end only at 5. It continues because there are three dots after 5, which simply means that this sequence is infinite. And the last sequence is also infinite because of the three dots after a. 
So I want to believe that you've understood or you can differentiate between infinite and finite sequence. Which of the following sequences is finite or infinite? Now, when you look at the, 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 the figures, you have a pattern. You have the first figure here. There's a pattern that is being followed. You have the arrow that is looking like the less than arrow, and another arrow that is looking like the greater than arrow. And you see that at each instance, when the less than comes and the greater than comes next. And so the three dots there simply indicates that that sequence has to continue. You follow that pattern. It means that you follow the same pattern to get other the other members of, of the sequence. And so that set is infinite because of the three dots behind there. Now, looking at the next one, before you can say it is final or infinite, there should be a pattern or there should be a rule. And you look at it here very well, there is a pattern that is being followed. You see an arrow, it's something like a half arrow pointing or a triangle pointing up, another triangle pointing down. That same pattern is being followed. And those three dots shows that it continues, that pattern has to continue. So which means it is infinite because of the three dots. Now you discover here that we also have a pattern. Two arrows looking up, shooting up, and two arrows shooting down. And you, you discover that another arrow begins the same process. And so, but at this level, there, is, there are no three dots after that pattern. It means it ends at this last arrow. It means that that sequence is finite because there is no, there are no dots after the last figure. So looking at the next, we have three dots and the three dots, they just simply tell us that that sequence continues. And so we can say that that sequence is infinite or that pattern or it's a pattern that we are following with the figures that pattern is infinite now the next pattern obviously is finite because we have we don't have three dots after the last figure so this particular pattern is finite now let's have a word problem dan read a book on the first day, he read up to page three. On the second day, he read up to page six. On the third day, he read up to page 12. Something is happening with Dan. Maybe the book is so interesting that when he gets into the, as he's getting into the book, the number of pages each day is increasing. Because you, as you can see, the first day he read up to page three, the next day he re read up to page six, and the next day he read up to page 12. You said there's something each day, a number of pages adding to the number of pages he has been reading previously. And so explain the rule for this sequence. On what page will he be on the fourth day? Is the sequence finite or infinite? And why? So, explain the rule for this sequence. You see that each day when he reads one or some number of pages add. So we said the first day he began by reading three pages. The next day he went up to six pages. And the, the next day he went to, not pages, sorry. He read up to page three for the first day. The second day he read up to page 6 and the next day he read up to page 12. It means that each day as he is reading, some number of pages are added to the number of pages he had read from the previous day. So which means that from this day to this day, he has added three extra pages. If I say like that, now, from here to here, we, are we still going to say he will add three extra pages or no? You see, we cannot talk about addition here. If I say from here to here, he adds three extra pages, correct. But now from here to here, to say to add three extra pages, no, it is no longer 
correct. And since it is increasing, we will talk about addition, uh, multiplication. Now, we can multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. So, which means that on the first day, he read uh, 3 pages. So, we have 3 times 2 to give 6, and 6 times 2 to get 12. Therefore, on the fourth day, this is the third day, on the fourth day, how are you going to get the number of pages he must have read or he will be on the fourth day? That's explaining the rule for the sequence. You simply just multiply the previous number of pages he has read by two to give you the next number of pages he, he will be on in the next day. And so the rule there is multiply the previous term by two. And so, on what page will he be on the fourth day? So as we have come out with the rule, on the fourth day, we we'll simply just multiply 12 by 2 to give us 24. So on the fourth day, he will be on page 24 of his book. Now, the question is, is the sequence finite or infinite and why? Is this sequence finite or infinite? Are we going to stop here at 24? No. 24, we, we are, we're not told that that book has just 24 pages. But we know that if it is a book, it means that there should be a last page. So that book has to end somewhere on the last page. And if it has to end on the last page, it means he will read, we all have to multiply till we will end on the last page. So that sequence actually is finite because every book has a last page. Now let us recall the real life situation. So let's go back to our Mr. John in the village with the agents carrying out the census. You discover that this agent successfully came out with a sequence. Mr. John could recall that his Last child is three years old, and the spaces between his children are just two years difference. Two years difference between his children. And so this agent thought it wise to give three. If they have a difference of two years, we have three plus two to give five, five plus two to give seven, seven plus two to give nine, and nine plus two to give eleven. We have one, two, three, four, five. But we're told that. Mr. John has seven children. And so, what is the age of his eldest child? You discover here that 11 plus 2 will give 13, and 13 plus 2 will give 15. And if we're talking about the eldest child, the eldest child should obviously have the age having the biggest number in the sequence. And so, Mr. John's eldest child will be 15 years old following that following that sequence so that is a sequence and so with what the agent did he came out with the all the ages of mr john's children and so the eldest child of mr john is 15 years old so sequences have helped an agent you see how important it is to come out with the age of mr john's children imagine that this agent never knew anything on sequences. How will he carry out the statistics? So we end this lesson with um, an assignment. You will take down the assignment and together in the next lesson, we are going to look at the correction. So we've come to the end of the lesson and the next lesson will be increasing and decreasing sequences. On a tege si, ma tege yop. On a tege minga, ma tege nyum. On a tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa kina bia jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.